we're back. This is Wild One. We are continuing our adventure to locate the icon of Ravenloft in, in the uh, chapel. And I've moved things around a little bit. Uh, this map is going to be ever-expanding. As you've seen so far, I've only drawn two new map tiles. And we have to draw another seven dungeon tiles before we get into that group of tiles 9 through 12 where the chapel is. So my exploration methods will be a little interesting just, for, just because of the real estate I have here available to me. And I'll probably move the map around. I might do some rotating of the map, maybe moving the heroes' sheets around a little bit, um, <clears throat> just to accommodate for space. So anyway, we're, we're starting round two. Arjan, who is over here, and we have a blazing skeleton, which is right there. It is under Alyssa's control, the ranger. So we have two turns before the blazing skeleton activates again. So it's probably in our best interest to get rid of the blazing skeleton before it has a chance to attack again. Alyssa, who has the careful shot, she has the one that guarantees a hit, so uh, on her turn she could address this guy uh, with one hit. We could get maybe Arjan in there and, and give it a hit as well. So I'm going to look through Arjan's cards here. We're going to see what sort of things we can do. What I'd like is for Arjan to be able to attack it and also move to an unexplored edge. Arjan's speed is five. One, two, three, four, five. That gets him there and he can use his his tide of iron which allows him to um, attack an adjacent monster with a plus eight bonus. So he's going to go one, two, three, four, five. We're going to put him right in front of this guy, and he's going to slap him. If you hit it, then you can place the monster on a tile within a tile of you, and you can move to any square on your tile. So this is going to be the thing I am actually looking forward to doing. I'm going to grab my, my little dice tray here, and we're going to roll. Oh, roll a 17. That definitely causes one damage to it. So, I have these little damage tokens to put with the monsters. The Blazing Skeleton suffers one damage, and as a result of Tide of Iron, I can place it within a tile of me. So, I'm going to put it here. Normally, when you move uh, monsters around, um, you put them in the actual locations where the, the monsters would normally spawn. So I'm going to put him here, but since it's my choice, I can place it anywhere I want, you would think. And then we're going to give him this little one here that indicates he got hit. He took a hit. <clears throat> but that also means that I can move my fighter anywhere I want on the tile, so I'm going to move him to here. And as a result, that ends his hero phase. So now we move into his, his exploration phase because he's adjacent to an unexplored edge. We draw a tile. It is our first tile with a black arrow. And then we draw a monster. It is a gargoyle. Here he is, our gargoyle. He'll be placed right here. The gargoyle is two hit points. He's three experience. I'll let you guess what that means. He's not particularly easy. So, 16 armor class and two hit points to kill him. And he has this attack that's plus eight and that even if he misses, he causes damage. I'll put him over here with Arjan. That completes the exploration phase. Now we move on to the villain phase. Well. We placed a tile with a black arrow, so we have to draw an encounter card. The encounter is an event called Overrun. What it says is that monsters charge from all directions. Each hero takes damage equal to the number of monsters he or she controls. And then that's, the, that's it for the event. So... Arjan controls a monster, 
and Alyssa controls a monster. That means they each take one damage apiece. So that brings Arjan to four damage and Alyssa to three damage. Uh, now we need to activate the monster, which is our gargoyle here. So, is the gargoyle within one tile of a hero? It is. It moves to the closest hero's tile, which means it doesn't actually move, and attacks each hero on the tile with a whirlwind of claws. And then this is the whirlwind of claws here, that plus eight. The damage is, if he hits, it's two damage plus the hero is slowed. Also, it mentioned um, each hero, that means it attacks separately each hero on the tile. He actually moves to the closest hero's tile, I'm sorry, he is within one. So he's actually going to move to here. There's only one hero on the tile, thankfully, and that's Arjan. So he's going to attack Arjan. Arjan has 17 armor class, so I only have to roll. I don't want to. Like I said, I only have to roll a 9. Rolled an 11. So, he takes a hit. So we have these tokens here that represent 5. So, he's taking 2 damage, so we're going to take 3 of these off and put one of these on. Gives him a total of 6 damage. He's also slowed. When he's slowed, he gets one of these lovely little things here. It's a marker. His speed is now only 2. At the end of his next hero phase, he gets to discard this condition. So, Arjan took 2 damage and has been slowed. So, I'm going to put this uh, near him. He's taken 6 damage. I'm going to put it right here. Indicate that he has been slowed. Well, after taking all of that beating, we get to finish Arjan's turn. <clears throat> now we move on to Thorgrim. Thorgrim's a little worried about Arjan over there, and he would like to do something about that. He's confident, I think we're all confident, that Alyssa is going to use her careful shot to kill that blazing skeleton. But it would be nice to get some hits in on that, Argo that gargoyle, and also help Arjan heal some hit points. I think what we're going to do is attempt a healing strike. Thorgrim has the boots of striding. Those give him six speed instead of five. So he can get one, two, three, four, five, six. He can go all the way up behind the gargoyle and hit him in the back. He's going to hit him in the back with his, with his healing strike. And his healing strike is the one that allows a hero to gain, regain a hit point if I hit. So if I hit the gargoyle, it's plus 8. The, gar the gargoyle's armor class is 16, so I have to roll at least an 8. Oh my god, I rolled an 8. Just barely. Gargoyle takes a point of damage. I'll just set that right here. And Arjan, I can choose a hero within one tile of me. Well, Arjan is right here. He's within a tile. He just happens to be adjacent. We're going to heal Arjan of one hit point. That's the end of Thorgrim's hero phase. We move into exploration. He did not explore. Therefore, we must draw an encounter card. And it's an attack called Hands of the Dead. Several hands crawl from the earth and grab at you. So we have to attack each hero on the active hero's tile. Unfortunately, since I brought Thorgrim up there, I brought Arjan into this mess. If a hero is hit, he's slowed, but uh, Arjan's already slowed. He can't be doubly slowed. So he can only be slowed once. So the only risk here really is to Thorgrim. Uh, Thorgrim, unfortunately, because this is a uh, miss one damage, uh, Thorgrim and, and Arjan both are guaranteed to take at least one hit. This is a plus six attack, and I have to hit, I have to attack each of them. Now, because of Arjan's defender ability, the Thorgrim gets a plus one bonus. So he has 17 armor class instead of 16. And it's six, so I have to roll an 11 or higher. We're going to start with Thorgrim. 
I rolled a two, so that's a miss for Thorgrim. Unfortunately, Thorgrim still takes a damage. And then Arjan, who has 17. Again, 11 or higher. And it was only a four. So, he also takes only one damage. It's the damage that Thorgrim just healed. And he got it right back. That's unfortunate. I'm sure you're starting to see what I, what I meant when I was talking about how brutal these encounters can be. All right, that's the end of Thorgrim's turn. We're ready for Alyssa now. Now, Alyssa is going to do as it was planned to get rid of this Blazing Skeleton before she has to activate it. It's already taken one damage. It takes two to kill it. She has her careful attack. She's going to move up to it. And because it's... It will be adjacent when she when she gets there. It will take one damage. Guaranteed to take a damage if she uses the careful attack. We're going to move her adjacent in such a way that she will be able to explore and another tile here. So she's going to go here to this unexplored edge. She's attacking it with the careful attack, which guarantees one damage and kills the blazing skeleton. We gain two experience for a trouble, so that brings us up to four experience over here. She also gets to draw a treasure. And as I had said before, I like to roll a d4 here, since I've got our blessings and fortunes separated from our physical treasures. We're going to roll, on, and only on a four do we grab a physical treasure. And we roll a two. So, hey, it's a breath of life. I regain a hit point. Thank goodness. That's a good thing. That is a good thing. We get to take one point of damage off of Alyssa. Now she's on an unexplored edge. We're starting the exploration phase. We're going to take a tile. And it's a white one, which is good. We don't have to worry about an encounter. Put her here. We do, uh, unfortunately, however, have to draw a monster. It's another Blazing Skeleton. Oh, bad luck. Bad luck. We just got rid of one of these and we're going to get another one. We have to bring back the Blazing Skeleton we just put away. So there he is. And he has to activate again. That's the end of her exploration phase, the villain phase. Of course, it was a white triangle, so nothing happens. Um, but we need to have this Blazing Skeleton activate because she just got it. And again, we're talking about... Moving through the tactics here. Is he within a tile of a hero? Yes, he is. Attacks each hero on the closest hero's tile with a ball of fire. So it's only one person gets hit, and that's Alyssa herself. She's the only one, as you can see, on this tile right here. Her AC is 15. His attack is plus 7. All he has to do is roll an 8. Ooh, he rolled a really, really large number. It's kind of overkill. Well, the 19. So she takes two damage for her trouble. It sucks to be Alyssa. She is at half health. But that ends round two. Let's go ahead and play round three, and then I think I'm going to stop the video. So we'll play another round here and let's see how things go. Arjan, his hero phase, he is slowed. His speed is only two. I don't have any reason to really move him here. He can attack and then move. So what he could do is attack this gargoyle and then go one, two, and he'd be at an unexplored edge. He could explore this location. So I think I want to take a stab at that gargoyle and get rid of it. Since he's the one controlling it, it's going to activate on his turn, so we want to try and get rid of it. He's going to do Tide of Iron, like he's done before. So he gets a plus 8 attack against the Gargoyle. The Gargoyle has an armor class of 16. He just needs to roll an 8 to destroy it. Oh, look at that. He rolled a 3. Well, that was a waste. I'd hate to leave the Gargoyle there. But we really need to explore, so I kind of feel like abandoning him. I'm so sorry, Thorgrim, but I'm going to be a Freddy Cat warrior and I'm going to move. 
one, two. We're going to bring him to this unexplored edge. So that ends his hero phase. We move to exploration. He's on an unexplored edge. We grab a tile. We have a wide open space here. Open in all four directions. It has a black triangle, so we will be drawing an encounter. We need to draw a monster. It's a wolf. It's only one experience. 14 armor class and one hit point. It falls under Arjan's control. And here is our wolf. So he goes right here. So now we move into the villain phase. Because we drew a tile with a black triangle, we have to draw an encounter. It's a trap. It's a trap! It's a dark trap. The soft click of a pressure plate beneath your foot precedes the volley of darts that explode from the wall. So we need to place a dart trap marker on the active hero's tile. So it's actually going to be this tile, not this tile. Here's the dart trap marker. When it activates, you attack each hero on the tile. It gets plus 8 bonus, and again, it's a 2 damage with a, with a guaranteed damage on a miss. To disable the trap, just like pretty much every other trap, it's rolling a 10 or higher. So we're just going to stick it, I don't know, we'll stick it right here. Alright, and then we just trigger the trap during the villain phase and attack each hero. So it's only going to attack Arjan. We've entered the villain phase, and... It's pretty explicit about activating each monster and trap you control in turn in the order that you drew them. So we drew the gargoyle first, then we drew the wolf, and then we drew the dart trap. So we're going to start by activating the gargoyle. Oh, also, uh, we reached the end of his hero phase. He's no longer slowed. Not that that's much comfort. I think uh, he's just about to get pretty well waxed here. We might end up having to use our first healing surge. So, like I said, uh, the gargoyle, unfortunately, is going to attack Thorgra. If you watch Doctor Who, the gargoyles kind of behave like the weeping angels, that if they're a certain distance, they do nothing. And it says so on the card, that if there's nobody within a tile of the gargoyle, it does nothing, it just sits still. <laughs> so, don't look away and don't blink. All right, so we need to roll for the Gargoyle first. The Gargoyle is going to attack Thorgrim. Thorgrim has an armor class of 16. The, Th the, uh, the Gargoyle has a bonus of plus 8. 16 minus 8 is 8. I only need to roll an 8. Oh, it was a natural 20. Well, you know what that means. It's a hit. All right, so Thorgrim takes 2 damage. And he is slowed. Now it's his turn to be slowed. Stick that up there. Next is the wolf. Wolf's tactics are uh, a little bit more involved. If it's adjacent to a hero, it is not. If it's within two tiles, this is a hell of a jump here. If the wolf is within two tiles of a hero, it moves adjacent to the closest hero and attacks that hero with a pounce. Now, pounce isn't quite as bad as a bite, so um, it does include uh, the opportunity to be slowed if it hits. But it's a plus seven attack, so it's going to jump until he's adjacent to him. So we can choose whether, if he's adjacent here, then he's off the tile. If he's adjacent here, he's on the tile. And it's just kind of a question of what do you think is going to happen. I'm going to put him here. It's a plus 7. Arjun has 17 AC, so we have to roll, or uh, the wolf needs a roll of 10 or higher to hit. He rolled an 11. That means Arjun takes another point of damage. And once again, he is slowed. Finally, the trap that Arjan sprung. He's standing on it. So it has an attack of plus eight. It's guaranteed to cause one damage, at least, to Arjan. 
he is down to 3 health. It won't kill him if it hits. It'll bring him down to 1 health. If I roll a 9 or higher, it hits. I'm really getting teased here. The, uh, the dice gods are against me. He takes 2 damage. He is down to 1 health. Arjun is in serious, serious trouble. That's the end of Arjun's turn. He survived, but wow. Wow, what a mess. Alright. So now we move to Thorgrim. What is Thorgrim going to do? He's a cleric. He should be trying to help people. Um, I really want him to kill that gargoyle. He has, an well, he has his healing strike. Okay, so if he hits the gargoyle, he can choose a hero within a tile of him. So he can choose Arjan because Arjan with, is within one tile. So I think that's probably what we're going to do. We're going to have him use his healing strike. The gargoyle has 16 armor class. The healing strike is attack plus 8. That means that I have to roll an 8 or higher. And I rolled a nice, solid, lucky 13. Guess what? That kills the gargoyle. Great. So, the gargoyle is 3 experience. We now have 7 experience over here. We have enough experience that uh, we can use 5 of it, a 3 and a 2 here, for example, to cancel an encounter if we don't like it. So we get to draw an encounter and decide after we've drawn the encounter whether we want to discard it or not. Or, we wait until somebody rolls a natural 20 on an attack. And if they do so, then we can spend 5 to level, level that person up. At any rate, I'm taking the gargoyle away. It's dead. Which is good. And because he used his healing strike, he's going to choose a hero within one tile of him. In this case, it's going to be Arjan to heal him of one hit point. Then, he's slowed, so he can only move two. He can't do much of anything right now. He's kind of equidistant between Arjan and Alyssa. And Alyssa over here is at half health, too. But we really need our, our uh, tank, Arjan, to stay healthy. So, as much as I don't really want to have to do it right now, I think it's just a good idea, just, you know, in terms of it's a tutorial playthrough. If I lose, I lose. But we're going to use his utility power called the Healing Word. And we're going to regain, by using it, Arjan will regain hit points equal to his surge value. His surge value is 5, which means he'll regain 5 hit points if we use it. And then we have to flip the card over after we're done. And there's flavor text on the card. You whisper a brief prayer and a divine healing light washes over your companion. It doesn't count as an action. It's just, you just do it. Uh, utility powers generally don't count as actions. They don't require you to take an action to do it. Sometimes they're reactive. Like his shield of faith is reactive. So it says here to use when you or a hero in your tile is hit by an attack. You can force the attack to miss. But it's another one of those where you use it once and it's gone. So we're going to use healing word. By doing so we're going to flip the card face down. And I'm going to keep it in his stack cards here, but uh, it'll be flipped face down. And he's going to heal Arjan five hit points. That brings Arjan back up to seven. Much better shape now to deal with that wolf and potentially have to deal with that trap again. Maybe he can roll a ten or higher and disable it. Now the question is, well, what do we want to do with, with Thorgrim? Do we want to just leave him standing there? He can still move if he wants to. His speed is only two. He can't move anywhere where he can explore. He could move here towards Arjan to support him, or he could move this way to support Elisa. That blazing skeleton's kind of nasty, and it's going to hit every hero on this tile, unless it moves up, unless Alyssa moves up. If, 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 if Alyssa moves up, then he's protected. So we could maybe just bring him up here, like where he's kind of close. He can, we can bring him over this way towards Alyssa. Maybe just bring him here. Um, he can be supportive of Alyssa, at least uh, partly. Alyssa's going to hurt. She's going to suffer a little bit of deep hurting from this blazing skeleton, unless she can kill it in one hit. And she's not going to be able to, I don't believe. 
I believe she has any abilities that will allow her to do that. She has her careful attack, which is guaranteed to cause one damage. So I think we're going to end Thorgrim's hero phase right there, which means he's no longer slowed. Now we move on to exploration. He didn't do anything, so we just move on to the villain phase. We have to draw an encounter because he did not explore. Let's see what horrible encounter we draw this time. It's another attack event called Choking Fog. Arid yellow smoke fills the crypt, causing you to choke and cough. You attack each hero on the active hero's tile with this. Well, you know what? I just burdened Alyssa by moving Thorgrim onto her tile. I keep, you know, this is one of those things you have to remember that there are quite a few encounters like these that are attack events that attack each hero on the active hero's tile. So it's generally a good idea to keep yourself alone on your tile and not sit on a tile with another hero because then you, you know, unfortunately you inconvenience the, the other heroes that are with you. So we're going to have to do this one. It's plus six. And again, it's another one of those that it's a guaranteed hit even if it misses. It'll cause one damage if it misses. So we're going to have to roll. I'm going to roll for Thorgrim first. Again, it's a plus six. Thorgrim's armor class is a 16. So we have to roll a 10 or a higher. Rolled a 12. Therefore, Thorgrim takes two hits. That brings him up to five damage. So I'm going to take these off of here and put this on. Then we roll for Alyssa. Alyssa's armor class is worse, so it only needs a nine. Ooh. The rolls have not been very um, good for me. She takes two damage. So we're just going to take this five here. We're going to take three off. We're going to put that on. She's down to two hit points. Looks like Thorgrim's going to have to help her out now. So that ends the, the Choking Fog event. It generally explicitly tells you to discard the card if the encounter is over. There are encounters called environments. Those tend to stay until another environment card is drawn. Now, what I could have done was blown the five experience and canceled that encounter, but uh, we still have all three of our healing surges, and they're, the worst is yet to come. I mean, there's going to be more and more junk we have to deal with, more monsters and so on. So, that was unfortunate. Thorgrim is not controlling any monsters or traps, so fortunately we don't have to do any of that, and that's the end of Thorgrim's turn. So now we move to Alyssa's turn. This is the last turn of round three, and like I said, I'm going to stop here after we finish with Alyssa. So we're going to bring Alyssa up to this blazing skeleton and do a careful attack. So she's going to move here. She's not going to move very far up. She's just going to move right to here. And she's going to use her careful attack ability that we've seen before. To guarantee one hit on the Blazing Skeleton. So the Blazing Skeleton suffers a damage. And now she's going to... That's the end of... She's ending her hero phase here. So she, now she's going to use her special scout ability, which I've been meaning to do. You can explore one unexplored edge on your tile, even if you aren't adjacent. So there's an unexplored edge over here, so we're going to take care of that one. I believe I still have space <laughs> in the view. This is turning into a rather long hallway. I don't know if I want to keep going that direction. It's a question of where am I going with the heroes. I might end up in the next video shifting this a little bit or rotating it or something along those lines, just based on the directions that the heroes are headed. Let's put a monster on that tile. What are we putting out there, Alyssa? Oh, we drew the Wraith. This is definitely the worst of the monsters that are in the monster deck. His AC is not bad. It's 15. But he's three experience, and there's a reason why. He has some really nasty abilities, including this Death Shriek. When this monster is destroyed, each hero on its tile takes a damage. 
So even after you kill it, it causes damages to everybody. And here's our race. I mean, it says underneath that he is, that he is indeed a race. <laughs> it's a little hard to tell with these, these translucent blue ones, this aquamarine color. It's a little hard to discern shapes, but yes, that is him. He goes right here. So now we need to draw an encounter because we pulled one of these. This is part of our villain phase. And it's an attack of gray ooze. The pseudopod emerges from a puddle of gray ooze on the ground and strikes at you. Attack the active hero. So this is only attacking Alyssa. But here's where I was talking about you can lose treasure cards. So there are encounters that can cause you can lo to lose treasures that you have. For example, Thorgrim's boots, he could lose them because of something like this. But he's not the active hero, so this won't hurt him. But it's a plus eight, and it causes three damage. And it will still hit with a miss. Alyssa is down to two HP. If this hits her, she is knocked out, and she'll be at zero at the beginning of her next turn and will be forced to use a surge to bring her back. Thorgrim could also heal her, but there's there's probably no reason at that point to do it. If it misses, she will survive, but she'll only have one hit point left. And we still haven't activated the Blazing Skeleton and the Wraith, so I believe she's in serious trouble. In fact, the Blazing Skeleton, its miss is one damage, and the Wraith's miss is one damage, so she is guaranteed to die here. Um, we can look at Thorgrim's utility power, his shield of faith. Oh, it's when you or a hero on your tile is hit and he's not on her tile. If he was on her tile, he could he could assist her. Well, let's go ahead and roll for the Grey Ooze and see what happens. She only has 15 armor class. Seven or higher will hit her. Hey, we rolled a three. We got a, we got a break. Not much of a break though because she still takes one damage. So now Alyssa needs to activate her monsters. We start with the Blazing Skeleton and then the Wraith. So the Blazing Skeleton is within a tile of a hero. It's going to attack each hero on the closest hero's tile with a ball of fire, which means only her. It will not hit Thorgrim. Uh, there is no reason for me to roll because a natural one is a miss and it still causes a damage on a miss. So she has fallen. Um, she will be down to zero health. And we'll just go ahead and, and set her on her side here. She is, she is down. It's still there. Now the question is uh, in the rules whether I have to activate the Wraith. And I think I still have to activate the Wraith. So we're going to have to do this. So what it says about the Wraith is that if the Wraith is within a tile of a hero, it moves adjacent to the closest hero and attacks that hero with a life-draining claw. Well, she's knocked out, so... Okay, I just checked the rule book just to be sure. And yes, it's true that um, downed heroes are ignored. The Wraith is here. She's down. Thorgrim is over here. Thorgrim is two tiles away. This would count as being within one tile of the Wraith, but it's not. So all it's going to do, we actually, this is not true. We move down here and it says the Wraith moves one tile toward the closest hero. So it comes down here. Now we get to choose where to put it because normally when it moves, when monsters move from tile to tile, they move to each of these marks where monsters normally spawn. But of course there's a blazing skeleton there. So we get to choose where to put the Wraith. We're just gonna put him here, right behind the blazing skeleton. This is uh, very unfortunate series of events here for our heroes. Um, while Thorgrim was able to at least bring some breath of life back into Arjan over here. Arjan still has seven hit points, is dealing with a wolf and a trap over there that he's going to have to get rid of. Thorgrim is over here all by himself with Alyssa who has been knocked out. 
and we're going to have to spend a healing surge on her next turn. So until her turn comes up again at the end of round four, she is knocked out. Um, the upside is that these will not be activated again until we get to her turn, until after her turn is completed. So she'll be stood back up. She can do a careful, her careful strike to kill this. Um, and then we have to deal with the Wraith. So when we stand her back up, she can do a careful strike and then she can move. So here's the thing, we're gonna try and flee from this Wraith and I think it's a good idea to do that. So this is two tiles away from the Wraith. This is two tiles away from the Wraith. Thorgrim could come this way toward Arjan and she can come this way away from after, after using her careful strike. So she's gonna use her careful strike, kill that and then run away. Run away! So I think that's probably the strategy we're going to follow when we return. I'm going to stop here and we'll edit the video and get it posted online. It's really the encounters that have hurt us more than anything else. And as I had said before, the encounters make this super challenging. The encounters that come with Castle Ravenloft are really bad. Not just the traps, but the constant attacks from sources that you can't do anything about. Um, eventually we're going to be forced to start using our utility powers and our daily powers. Uh, when we come back, we'll pick up at the beginning of round four, starting with Arjan. Until next time, this is Wild One signing off.